my friends are since. A few years ago, my wife's dad, who is a musician and used to play with some quite well-known bands, gave me one of the devices that he had lying around. This really nice, classic old analog drum machine. Specifically, it was this one, the Boss DR55 or Dr. Rhythm 55. Now, this is quite a limited drum machine in the sense that because it's one of those older machines that was kind of designed for accompanying kind of guitar players and things like that. You basically have to write your patterns on this thing and that's kind of it. You can't really clock it to anything. You can't trigger the sounds individually and you also can't really actually adjust the sounds very much at all. And so I wanted to make better use of it because I don't really just like having these things sitting around. I'd like to actually make music with it. And so I looked up some of the modifications that I could make. The first one was obviously to try and clock this from like my DAW or something like that. However, the clock modification is actually quite difficult. So I decided against doing that. And instead, I decided to add in a couple of different modifications. Now, I started modding this quite a while ago, quite a good few months ago, actually. And I hit a point where I just, I messed it up. I'd lifted some traces off the PCB and I couldn't get it to work the way I wanted it to. So I packed it away in a box, one of those wee boxes of shame and regret that we all have if we have projects. And I said, oh, I'll, I'll come back to this one day. And now that I've been doing a lot more circuit bending and stuff, I have a bit more experience of circuits and understanding how not to fuck things up as much or as badly. And so I dug it out and decided to finish off the uh, build and I've managed to do it successfully. So what I've done here is I have added in external trigger points for some of the different sounds. Now there are about four different sounds on here. There's a kick drum, there's a snare, there's a rim shot and a hi-hat. However, the hi-hat is a bit more tricky to add in a trigger point for. I tried it, I couldn't get it to work so I didn't really bother with it. But I've got trigger points for the kick drum, the snare and the rim shot. And this means that I can control it either from my modular system up here. You can see I've got a clock running there with, you know, outputs coming in to here. Or I can use MIDI and use MIDI to trigger, which is particularly nice because it means now I can sequence this from other gear. Now, the other thing I've done is add in two knobs down here, which are, uh, kick drum modifications. So one of these is for decay time and one of these is for the tuning or the pitch of the kick. Now they both kind of work together in a sense, like they're not completely separate. So if you adjust the decay, it kind of changes the pitch and you have to adjust it till you get it the way you want it to. However, it sounds mental, like it really does sound pretty wild. Uh, I could show you the back, I guess. I've basically crammed these mods into the battery compartment here. So the battery is just kind of floating around. But since I'm using this in the studio anyway, it's not a big deal. And maybe at some point I will find a way to add a DC input or something like that. If you hear that beeping, that's because I've got macaroni cheese in the microwave and I'm trying to do this video in between. Anyway, I'm going to give you a very quick sound demo of this just with the camera speakers and then I'm going to actually try write a track with it. Uh, I'm not going to hook this up directly into the camera just now, but I will afterwards. So I'm going to hit play on my modular. You can hear that kick drum is pretty meaty. And then if I adjust it. Ho ho ho! What'd you make of that? I bet you didn't think that we old box could do that kind of sounds. Anyway, it does and uh, it sounds pretty good actually. Hopefully you got a taste of it over the camera. But I'm going to try write something with this now and just play it out. If you do have a DR55, I can't give you too much information on exactly what I did with this because uh, I started doing it you know, a while ago and then had to kind of work out what I was doing when I picked it up again. But for the bass drum modification, you remove the resistors R8 and R9, I think, or R8 and R12, and you basically replace them with 1K potentiometers and 100K potentiometers. And there are guides online, different people do different things. So you can easily look it up and see the kinds of things that you want. Anyway, I'm gonna go and try do something with it and then 
Uh, you can hear what it sounds in context. <laughs> 